Hello everybody, how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well. If you're not doing so well today, well, here is a cup of comforting sakura tea. Mm. Dozo. There we go. Well, let's just jump right into it because I know this video is going to be very long. I can feel it, you can feel it. I hope you're settled down and ready to hear all about my second year in Japan, which, wow. I can't believe I have been here for two years. I was supposed to be here for one year and then after COVID it was supposed to be six months and I've been here for two years and I'm planning to stay here. I don't know for how long but I, I have no like end date in mind so it's, it's mind-blowing that somehow things have worked out and I have now been here for two years. It's absolute madness, but I'm not gonna dwell on that. I'm just gonna rejoice in the fact that I've somehow made it, we've somehow made it to two years in Tokyo, and I wanna talk all about it. I would like to talk about the things that are the same, how this year has compared to the last year, the things that have changed, how I've changed, like perspectives. I also have a bunch of questions that I've received from you guys. Thank you so much from that last little video that I posted actually a surprising amount of questions so very grateful for that i'm gonna try to answer as many as i can as i've mentioned this video is going to be quite long and i know myself i'm probably gonna jump from one thing to another i'm gonna try and keep it structured into categories like jobs accommodations relationships finances i'm gonna try and keep it structured but mm. Mm. so first of all how does this second year compared to the very first year I was in Japan. Well, obviously I got used to a lot more things. I feel much calmer, much less anxiety and happier somehow. This second year hasn't been like the happiest. There's been a lot of ups and downs, a lot of lessons, hard, hard lessons that I've had to learn. But after the second year, I'm going to mention like this moment in time right now like post two years i feel calmer and happier than i have been in quite some time which is a really good thing i feel optimistic i feel positive like i feel like i had to go through all of this to end up where i am now and the first year in japan was a lot of stress and everything was new and exciting but also very stressful and scary and i couldn't get used to things and it was very overwhelming if you don't know me at all yet uh, i struggle with my mental health a lot i struggle with anxiety i have struggled with depression though recently it has been absolutely fine so mostly anxiety i get overwhelmed so fast anyway first year in japan i was overwhelmed a lot i felt like i couldn't breathe a lot sure i loved being here it was exciting it was new like wow i'm in japan i'm living in tokyo what the hell but also like i felt like i couldn't breathe most of the time i feel like towards the end of my first year in japan so march of last year ish is when things finally started to calm down for me i know during that time i kind of went through like this kind of depressive episode my anxiety was very high but after that, I feel like I started to settle in here. And Japan started feeling more like home than something that was like brand new and sparkly and overwhelming. Hopefully that made sense. Things that have obviously not changed are that I'm still living in a share house. I'm still not a fan of living in a share house, but I still cannot afford moving to another place even if the rent is much cheaper than what it would be here the moving costs in japan specifically in tokyo are very very expensive so i would have to front a lot of money in one go move into a new place probably furnish that place because most of the furnishings here belong to the share house and it would just I would just be wiped out so for now this is where i am and i'm just gonna roll with it even though i would really 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 would like my own place next thing that hasn't changed obviously is my financial situation i'm still like hustling very hard to make ends meet but i guess i could use this to segue into my next topic is that what has changed and i don't think it had happened yet uh during my one year update video is that i now have a job a full-time job i think by this time last year, I was really, really, really stressing about finding a job which was going to allow me to stay in Japan after graduating from language school, like I needed a new visa. 
and I think it was May of last year, so almost one year now, I found a job, then graduated from language school, and then that job became my sponsor and my full-time job, which is drumroll English teaching and also French teaching. I speak both languages, I teach both languages. It is not my dream job whatsoever, but it gives me a visa, and living in Japan makes it worth it somehow. I know, like, this is how much I want to stay in Japan. You guys, if you know me, you know how much of an introvert I am. You know how much I suffer from social anxiety. Talking to people is draining. Small talk for me is torture. And when I started this job, I was in tears at the end of almost every single day. I was like, I want to quit, but I love Japan. And now it's been a year. I have been teaching for a full year, which is like good job. I do really really want to find a job that is closer to, well, that's one, more comfortable for me to do, aka not talking to strangers every day, um, but also closer to something that I enjoy doing, something more creative, video editing, drawing, anything but teaching. So this is something that I am looking forward to achieving this year, next year, I don't know, but I've managed to make it to one year into teaching not full classrooms i teach one-on-one -on -one lessons and i do group lessons but it is very draining for me and also i feel like career opportunities aren't there like there is much room for growth and the salary isn't worth it at all the salary per lesson is it's fine but i ain't getting paid per lesson and if I have days without students, which does, which does happen, sometimes I get one student, sometimes I get no students, I don't get paid that day. So it is kind of a stressful lifestyle. And also because my schedule changes every single day, it is hard to plan my own life. I'm already not good at planning, so having this issue has just, well clearly, you guys have seen the lack of posts on Instagram, the lack of videos, the lack of like everything at the moment. It's due to this job, mostly. Like my brain is everywhere and nowhere at once but this is my job and i'm doing it as an introvert as a mm, mentally different person so it is doable now the positives with this job visa aside salary aside is strangely enough i am talking to people so this job does keep me socialized and i feel the difference sometimes like in, in Brussels, I could go like one week, two weeks without talking to anyone. I know it's bad, but I just like my me time. Now I have to make small talk with people. I have to interact with people. I have to talk. I have to keep the conversation flowing because it's, it's a teaching lesson. It's a conversation. I have to find topics on the go, on the fly, and I'm getting way better at it. I have been able to apply these skills in everyday life. I was gonna say in real life, no, in everyday life <laughs> with people who are not my students, which is really, it feels good because talking to people used to feel very, very awkward. I used to go for long periods of time without talking to people and I would feel rusty when I would have to have a conversation with someone. As I've mentioned, small talk is really difficult for me, but thanks to teaching, I feel like I'm able to do that and ask questions and show interest in what people are telling me and not being like inside my head like how do I end this conversation as soon as possible so that is one upside to teaching outside of you know having a job and having a visa and having some form of income let's talk about income and money and finances teaching alone does not cover my rent at all not even close which is why I want to change jobs, because I am tired of financial instability. I feel like I have been financially unstable since I've graduated from art school, like since I was in my early 20s. This is the same. I'm living my life on a budget, and as much as I like art and creative stuff, I am tired. I am craving comfort. I am craving, like, you know, the lavish life as we all do but most of all i'm just craving some stability and not being like am i going to be able to make rent this month what do i have to do to make ends meet do i have to do a photo shoot do i have to sell some art what do i need to do to make it this month this is tiring i'm in my 30s i have 
been ready to settle down for quite some time now and the fact that it's not happening is very frustrating for me mm. <laughs> so that's something that i that that has not changed financially it has not changed but i'm getting really god desperate sounds really bad like i'm 30 years old and i'm desperate no i am getting really frustrated and annoyed and like i really want that to change as soon as possible type of thing like living your life on a budget it, it is not Fun. and I mentioned it in like almost every video is where I'm out and I want to go to that cafe and I want to go to that store and I want to buy some pretty clothes that are more suited to me because I'm still wearing some of the clothes that I was wearing in my 20s and it's not me anymore so yes I am really craving something else I'm needing something else to happen and um, let's just say that I'm trying I'm trying to make that happen I do feel like money would open a lot of doors for me Moving, moving would benefit me a lot. It would improve my mental health. It would improve my dietary habits because, as you know, I don't like using the kitchen there. So I kind of take shortcuts, and it's not it's not working out so great for me. Living in one room is starting to feel very cluttered. When I first moved here, I had like all the space, and now it's starting to feel like I'm starting to feel really overwhelmed. Like I want to get rid of like a lot of stuff, but also those are things that I need now because for example I recently bought an oven I invested in an oven for this room so I can expand the things that I'm eating because I can't eat rice bowls every single day so now I have an oven but of course an oven you need like the special dishes and the, the gloves to take the things out and like ingredients and stuff too because I've started baking again because I really like baking but obviously you have to fit all of this in one room and it's getting really cluttered so even though I'm trying to keep this structured I'm a little bit over all over the place so I've mentioned my teaching job and that I have a lot of other side jobs um yeah I still do I'm still passionate about drawing I'm still passionate about making YouTube actually I think that was one of the questions like do you still want to do YouTube yes I do I just don't have the time for it the time and the money because sometimes going out and filming requires money it can be as simple as train fare food for the day going to special places everything requires money and when you have no money even spending the smallest amount is stressful but I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself I'm still passionate about YouTube I edit videos for people I do special photo shoots for now I have to keep my head above water I do all these kind of things but how to explain this it's fairly simple but I'm doing it for the money I'm not doing it for myself anymore and it's kind of sad I miss having projects I miss being able to do like Inktober just because like making a whole story just because you know that kind of thing now it's more like what do i need to create in order to bring income in and it's like it's very sad for me for now but i'm still passionate about it and i do want to reconnect with that part of myself let's talk about health physical health mental health all the health well i am in quite a good place now but these past two years have been like up and down like it's been crazy I have discovered whole new sides to my anxiety they have gone in different directions to what I'm used to but I am now used to those different directions I think so might still change um, I have lost a lot of weight in the first year coming to Japan and I'm now regaining all this weight which feels really foreign and strange to me and triggering my body dysmorphia like crazy I, I, ugh, it's hard to look at myself in the mirror these days I'm all over the place again with this topic but yeah physical health I feel like I'm okay but I compared to how I used to be in Belgium where I was eating super clean and super healthy and doing my best and going to the gym like almost every single day of the week compared to life in Belgium I have not been keeping up with my healthy habits and I, I definitely feel it I feel tired a lot more I got like really bad dark circles my skin is breaking out I kind of have a gut going on but also something that we should all keep in mind and that I have to keep reminding myself is that I am in my 30s now and when you're in your 30s your body does change so are all these changes, the tiredness, the skin, the, the eye bags, the everything, 
feel like the, <laughs> the lack of energy, general energy, is it due to lifestyle, like being in Japan, not eating healthy, or is it also due to turning 20, I wish, turning 30? <laughs> that kind of thing. I feel like it's a mixture of both, but I definitely miss my healthy habits. I do miss taking care of myself way more. Maybe in Belgium I was a little too restrictive. I am kind of on that side of things, but I do miss it. Um, I barely work out. I, I can squeeze in two workouts a week if I'm lucky. I feel okay. I, I feel like I could be better, but I feel generally okay, but I miss like going for it and like really eating clean and healthy and like going that extra mile and going to the gym and lifting and doing all these things that made my body feel so like energized and strong and you know all that stuff i miss it like i can barely get out of bed before 7 a.m these days and i used to get out of bed at 5 before it was a little too extreme not gonna lie but i miss it so that's physical health like Things are changing. I look at my body in the mirror sometimes and it's like, who, who is that? Who is this lady? Like, where is the girl? Who is this woman staring back at me? So body dysmorphia is definitely going strong and when you're surrounded by petite Japanese ladies, it doesn't help. Um, so having a little bit of um, body image issues and confidence issues about like my appearance and all that stuff that's been going on that's like something that has happened <laughs> recently mental health as I've mentioned is just I'm adapting I'm learning I'm in a good place now it's like something clicked and I feel like I'm able to control control <laughs> manage my symptoms way easier right recently and also i'm noticing that if i eat like a ton of sugar it's gonna be worse if i eat junk food i'm gonna feel worse so i'm definitely learning to be more self-conscious and listening to myself more and be more attentive but it's been a journey so i think that's all for mental health oh one thing that i've noticed is my productivity like if i was kind of adhd before now it's madness <laughs> I can't focus like I'm all over the place I'll do one thing and then go to the next and then come back and like what was I doing mm. <laughs> don't know where that came from but yeah that's one thing that I've noticed just read my notes something that I didn't mention is that I'm getting sick I'm getting cold quite a lot here but I have the feeling it's because I'm teaching people one-to-one -one, like man-to-man -man, and I'm probably catching a whole bunch of things and maybe these are viruses that I'm not used to don't know how that works like strains that are local <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm catching a lot of colds like a lot I'm not happy about it I feel like I'm redoing my immunity but right now I'm in quite a good place a much better place than I've been for quite a while actually so it feels really good and one of the reasons why i'm in a better place that's the next topic that i think i want to mention are relationships friendships romantic i usually don't talk about my own personal romantic experiences on here i feel like i have a voice in the back of my head that's like don't air your dirty laundry i'm gonna try not to do that but i do want to mention what happened last year so my first year moving to Japan. I got in a relationship like within the first few weeks, like met someone, immediately started dating. I think that was like the first person I went on a date with when I arrived in Japan, which is crazy. And it was really sweet for me. I hadn't been in a proper relationship for quite some time. I had like a really disastrous long-term relationship in Belgium and I left a huge gap like where I couldn't, I couldn't see myself being in a relationship, but Many years later, I moved to Japan and I fell right into a relationship and it was very sweet and new and I was like, oh my god, I'm in a relationship again, I'm so happy and I ignored all the signs that this person is not right for you. This person was not a bad person whatsoever, but we were completely mismatched and I'm really, really, really infamously bad at breakups. It's something like I get so attached to people that when I have to detach and have them exit my life it is it rips me apart <laughs> for some reason that i can't explain so it was really tough and then like a few months later i got into another relationship and that's what that's my second year in japan got into another relationship and all this time i'm jumping into relationships i think after my first 
boyfriend I dated and then I got into another relationship all this time I'm not creating friendships. <laughs> I, I do have some friends in language school um, but we don't hang out as much. We, like, we talk a lot online but we don't hang out much and I mainly rely on these men to like fulfill my social life and big mistake, right? <laughs> Which is why this second relationship was so bad for me. I should have exited that thing like less than three months in to be honest and I didn't. I just pushed myself to make it work and it was toxic and borderline abusive and um, I stayed for way too long and that's why the second year my mental health was not great. Um, that was the main reason and probably why I feel so light and happy now is like finally I'm like got rid of that dead weight. Don't rely on one person. Don't put your eggs in one basket. I don't mean like date around and stuff but have friends have a support system i wouldn't say that i have a strong support system here yet but i've started creating friendships here like actual not online like people from my language school have mostly all gone home we still keep up but that's about it um i do have more people that i can rely on here and it feels good i, I feel more secure so yeah have people you can rely on that's one big change i have more people here and it feels really good really so those people are watching thank you so much i love you so much i just had to take a small break because it was really getting warm in here so i just turned the aircon on i hope you can't hear it but luckily i i subtitle all my videos these days so it, it should be fine back to relationships a little i thought i was done with the subject but then i checked my notes and i have a couple <laughs> a couple other things that i want to mention dating in your 30s feels so different than dating in your 20s in general not only in japan it feels like an effing speed run like you know you're playing a game at like twice the speed it is so fast when you're in your 20s you have the time you're like let's see how it goes let's go with the flow in your 30s if you're both like wanting marriage and kids one day it feels so fast like almost too fast so that's the small parentheses that i wanted to add because maybe you're in your 20s and you don't realize this but dating in your 30s it goes so so fast like you are asking all the difficult questions really fast and you are checking your own emotions like do i like this person do i not should we break up should we continue like you're doing all of this so fast compared to in your 20s where you're like let's just see where it goes that's one thing that i've noticed because i have dated a lot more in the second year than i did in the first year so like fresh experience if you have more questions and you need a separate video or like dating 2.0 video ask your questions and i'll make that happen another thing um that i have really really struggled with uh, since coming to japan culturally and um, i'm feeling kind of awkward about saying that on video is the cheating culture here like people cheat way more here or maybe more openly here like I feel like, okay, I'm from a different culture, so I don't want to talk about another culture like I understand. I'm just going to try and explain what I understand and from my point of view. But if you're in a relationship, like in Europe, for example, and you're in a monogamous relationship and it's established that we're not going to see other people. It's just like you and me. If cheating does happen, it's a very painful and it's a big betrayal and we usually break up and it's a whole... It's very messy if cheating does happen. It's a really... It's kind of a big deal and cheating does happen in Western culture. But I feel like in Japan, the lines are way blurrier. That's, an, that's the way I want to go with it. That's the way I want to put it. Like some women will be like if you do if you do cheat I don't want to know about it like don't make it obvious like don't make a fool out of me Of course, I'd rather you didn't cheat, but I don't want to know type of thing Especially before marriage. I think like cheating within marriage does happen a lot I've heard so many things it happens a lot, but it's a bigger deal if you cheat once you get married but before that it happens so much and it it was madness for me. It was crazy. It blew my mind. It made me, it brought like my insecurities to a whole new level, which is not good. I'm working on it. But ugh. now with new people that I'm dating, this conversation happens early on. Like, what is cheating for you? That conversation has to happen because you would be surprised. 
like there are things called soap lands here which is basically a brothel though prostitution is illegal in japan so soap lands is like a loophole kind of thing a lot of men and women consider soap lands not cheating they consider it a service the same as getting a massage you pay for it so technically it's not cheating you know so with this type of mindset you have to realize that there will be other differences other loopholes that will not be considered cheating for them but will be like a hundred percent cheating for you for me that was a difficult one to swallow and uh like i said having that discussion with every potential partner from now on Hmm. Let's talk about school and uh, my Japanese skills. I feel like I mentioned that one of the last one year update video is that I felt so bad about how bad my Japanese skills still were after a year. Now it's been two years and a, a little bit um, and I've graduated from Japanese language schools. So how have things changed? Huh. <laughs> My Japanese still isn't great. It is better. It does help that I get to use Japanese more with Japanese people these days. I've had that opportunity and that has helped so much. So, so, so much. Because after graduating from Japanese language school, I went straight into teaching. And in teaching, I only speak English or French. Like, I barely use Japanese with my students unless, like, they really, really don't understand one word. And instead of like looking it up in the dictionary, I just tell them the word in Japanese. But <laughs> even with the staff, I mostly speak English, like I sometimes half and half, but mostly English. And after graduating from language school, I just felt my Japanese like go down and then plateau. And I was trying to study by myself and juggling with the new job that I was really struggling with at that time. And I, my Japanese was going nowhere. It was getting worse and worse and worse. And it was like such a panic. It was. Oh my god guys, it was it was really bad feeling like I was living in the country and I was losing the skill that I that were necessary to my survival. Fluff. It was really really frustrating and I, I didn't know what to do and everyone was getting better and I was getting worse. It was so frustrating. And then I met some Japanese people with who I could speak actual Japanese because they couldn't really speak English and that helped so much and i was like duh you need to speak to people to actually like practice the language and you can't just study from textbooks and i know that but as i've mentioned socially not great not great at all awkward and i'd rather not speak to people if i can help it but yeah <laughs> it, it was the missing ingredient to be honest like i'd studied so much in textbooks already but i had like no chance to practice it so now i finally feel like i'm going up like i'm finally progressing i feel like i don't have to like make sentences up in my head all the time and you know like things like that it's like starting to come out more naturally Gramma grammatically it's probably like 60 percent incorrect but it's more spontaneous like it flows out of me more more easily um, i still have to study of course i'm still like self studying like almost every day not a lot but i mean a little bit every day like it moves the arrow in the direction like you want to go to just move the arrow that's something that i've been living by recently even if it's just a little even if you move the arrow like one millimeter you're moving the arrow in the direction you want to go to so yeah japanese not great still super anxious if i have to go into a situation where i know i'm gonna have to speak to someone like at a store at the post office at a clinic at Blah. Something that happened actually last week. <laughs> Went to a cafe. I'm usually I'm used to all the sentences that the staff say, and it's usually when they see that I'm a foreigner, they they don't use keigo. They use like standard polite Japanese, but like not the level up. And usually that I can understand. But that day I'd come out of work, and I think he used like full on keigo sentence, and all the words blurred into one, and I was like, sorry. <laughs> Basically, the staff was asking if I wanted a smoking section or a non-smoking section and then I didn't get it at all. So yeah, Japanese still not great. Not where I want to be yet, but thankfully there's progress. And life outside of Japanese language school is, is pretty good. I feel more like an adult, <laughs> for sure. I remember that the feeling I first got after graduating from Japanese language school, it feels like they took off like my, um, my wheels? What is that word? My training wheels? My bike and they pushed me and I was kind of like, wait, I'm not ready. <laughs> hang on, hang on, let me, let me get on myself. And it was just like, okay, the 
I was pushed out of the nest so fast and it felt kind of overwhelming at first like just okay now I don't have my school to fall back on because they were my my sponsor they were my guarantors but now it's just like okay I have a sponsor with my job but I can't fall back on my job and you know all that stuff I'm, say I'm saying so many words do, do, do any of these words make sense right this video is really starting to be a jumble of way too many things so I'm gonna think about the things that I have been able to do this year, some new things. Like, you know the Jap Japan bingo card um, <laughs> type of thing? What kind of things have I done in this second year that I had not yet done so far? I did go home last November for the first time, um, and Belgium did not feel like home. It was so weird, you guys. But also, I do need to keep in mind that I was like two weeks post-breakup. Um, I was jet lagged to hell and obviously I was going back home to say goodbye to my grandparents house which was kind of a heavy thing and I went to see my grandparents grave so you know it wasn't the happiest trip but Belgium did not feel like home anymore it felt like a very dark and rainy country and I was happy to come back to to Japan obviously I was very happy to see my family and some friends and I was sad to just have to say goodbye to my mom and Pachi again and all that stuff but i was i was very happy to come back to japan japan is now my home so that is one thing one thing that i've done went back to home and back to help to belgium but i feel like japan is now my home i've also been to clinics which i think i hadn't done so far not so good experiences again it's in another video i went to a women's clinic very bad experience will not be going back i need to find other clinics but i'm like kind of wavering because when i go to like foreigner friendly english speaking clinics i have bad experiences so i feel like i should just go to a standard clinic that has really good reviews like kind people and just like figure out japanese with a translator app or something like that because every time and i don't know if it's because i'm used to some type of quality of treatment back in Belgium but what's wrong with these doctors why are they so mean why don't they want to look at me why don't they want to examine me it's just like okay get your medicine and get out why <laughs> I don't get it I went to a women's clinic twice one time for the bad experience and then I had to come back for the results which I'm not satisfied because I don't understand my results at all and I went I'm going I'm it's an ongoing thing. I'm going to the dermatologist because I need to renew my allergy meds. And again, the doctor does not look at me at all. She's just like, oh, you have this. Okay, here's your medicine. Come renew it. So I have to keep going back. And I, since it is a dermatology clinic and I have been getting really bad chin, like acne type thing, which has never happened to me. That's something new to add to the bingo card. Skin is going to shit since coming to Japan. Could be related to age, hormones, and bad diet, okay? But when I went back the last time, I clearly had like a huge breakout of the urt carrier allergy thing. She didn't even look at it. She was like, okay, here's your next batch. And I was like, this is what we're talking about, right? And she was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I see. She was, like, she, she was talking to her computer the whole time. She d <sighs> Am I, have I been spoiled by Belgian doctors? Because Belgian doctors are not that great either, but at least they examine you. Like they cover your, they cover their bases. Like I went to dermatologists back in Belgium and they would they would look at my skin. I don't know, do something. This doctor has never touched me and she's a dermatologist. Anyway, this is a topic that I'm really struggling with here. I'm curious to know about other experiences and your opinions and if there are any Japanese people who are watching this. I'm curious about what you think. Like, is, th is this normal? I don't know. I do need to go to the dentist actually. I think that's the next thing. The next big thing I have to do is go to a dentist and um, I'm not looking forward to it whatsoever. Maybe they won't even look at my teeth. Who knows? Another thing that's happened um, off the Jap Japan bingo list is that I, I finally got stuck in the train doors. <laughs> uh, we need some humor up in here. Yeah. I've seen some people get stuck in train doors and it's like, how do you even manage that? And then it happens to, to you, it happened to me, and it's like, ah, I, I wasn't aware the door was about to close. Sometimes it's very long, like you get the chime, the door's gonna close, and then you get a gap, and then the door closes, and sometimes it's like, chime, okay, door is closed, and that was one of those times, and my backpack got stuck in the doors, and I couldn't move, and two uh, of the other passengers had to open the door, but believe me, I would have been 
deathly embarrassed any other day but I had just worked a very long teaching day and I was just like you know what I think I even sighed or like was like ugh when the, the doors closed on my backpack and when the people opened the door for me I was like okay thank you I'm just gonna go hide over there let's move on to your YouTube questions let me get them out any convenience store food you would recommend what do people in Japan usually do during the weekends what is it like using dating apps in Japan? Okay, we got three really good questions. Convenience store food that I would recommend. I feel like you have to try some onigiri. Like, convenience store onigiri are really good. I really like them. I think I like between Family Mart and 7-Eleven onigiri best. I would recommend that while you're in Japan, you grab all those limited edition uh, seasonal foods and drinks. Usually you'll have this kanji up on the on the thing like either limited edition or seasonal edition because these those are usually quite good not all of them usually quite good and then they disappear so i recommend like just grabbing them and trying them so what do japanese people usually do on weekends they will go out some japanese people who have had like really really stressful weeks will sleep during the entire weekend a part of that as well but on the weekends you will usually see like a group of friends going to cafes going to parks couples go same for couples actually going to cafes going to parks shopping going to restaurants i feel like food is a really big thing in japan it's like something that everyone like really enjoys japanese people really enjoy their food enjoy a good meal they enjoy sharing a meal with friends and family so i feel like on weekends that's what a lot of people would do they would just go out for a walk go have a meal hang out i feel like it's not much different from everybody else like on weekends we we meet our friends we go out we hang out we go out for a drink we go out for a meal um i personally like going out for walks um still something that i do every weekend actually i think i'll jump from this question to another question that i kind of saw earlier is that how do japanese people manage to actually go out during weekends after like working so much um i feel like it's refreshing to go out for japanese people and myself included like of course sometimes you need to stay home and recharge and refresh but going out sometimes is as equally refreshing after a week where you've been stuck at an office job mostly like computer sometimes no windows no fresh air just aircon aircon it's so it feels good to go out and talk and like like i mentioned sharing a meal and things like that obviously work life is very tough in japan like you get over time you get crazy hours you get sometimes really bad working environments like black companies i think that going out on weekends feels really refreshing for everyone myself included what is it like using dating apps in japan i have a whole video about dating where i talk about japanese apps where it's very different from what we're used to in the west it's no tinder and bumble i've never used the other ones like raya and hinge i don't think i've used those ones um in japan i've used bumble and i've used pears i would say the most to find a partner um recently pears is the one i've used the most and it's the most serious one, I feel like. What is it like? <laughs> different. Completely different. And if you don't know how to navigate dating apps in Japan, you'll 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 make mistakes and you'll learn from them. <laughs> that is gonna be my short answer. I'm gonna refer you back to my, my dating video. And if that video leaves you with more questions, come back and write them here and they'll go towards the dating 2.0 video that I think that I'm going to have to make because obviously learned a lot mm. next question what's been the hard part of living the hardest part of living in Japan for you the hardest part for me I think has been the language or rather not being able to communicate my needs and my wants when you want something you just use your own language I would like this I want that please give me this I would like to send this parcel to this place I sometimes feel like a frustrated child um, that, that does not have the words, that does not have the vocabulary to say what they want and you know at the end they, they just have a meltdown and cry because they can't express what they want it sometimes feels like that and because of this I have been procrastinating with a lot of things like 
sometimes it takes me weeks to go send a parcel because I have to hype myself up to go to the post office or like it takes me way too long to make a medical appointment because I know it's gonna stress me out and frustrate me that I cannot communicate well and also when I receive mail I'm like oh sh shit what is this am I supposed to do something with this letter what is it about okay I have to open my translator again am I understanding this oh shoot I have to do this admin procedure now it's gonna take me hours so yes because of language I have felt inadequate more times than I can count and not being able to communicate what I want like a small child is a very frustrating. I'd like to know if you see a lot of bugs and how you deal with it and when there's typhoons, what do you do, how is it? I'd also like to know if people eat at restaurants or cook. Um, where do you go when you usually have a beer? Thank you for your question. Bugs. Well, as a, as a person who dislikes bugs very very much, um, you'd be glad to hear that I have not had very bad experiences with bugs or cockroaches even though I live in a share house, I have not had bad experiences in the summer they are the cicadas, we have a lot of bushes outside and sometimes the cicadas come on the window, very very loud sometimes have come inside which I really really hate but so far nothing like terrifying I've seen the hornets flying, like you, I can, you can actually see their shadow on the sidewalk when there's one above you terrifying but so far so good there are so many like insect repellents at konbinis, at supermarket, at like a sp at specialty stores so like there are cockroach traps and like all these things like mosquito things so you'll be fine honestly um, Tokyo at least is fine typhoons are fine, they're really not that bad it's a lot of rain, a lot of wind really big typhoons are pretty rare so I think for traveling you'll be fine same with with earthquakes like you get small earthquakes like medium-sized earthquakes here um, quite regularly but like big ones are quite rare I hope like everyone's saying like there's a big one due anytime soon but touch wood honestly um, I think you'll be fine if you're just traveling um, there was a question about do people eat out or cook more? I feel like people eat out more and do deliveries a lot Like I think Uber Eats is quite quite popular here Like people either like have konbini food Like quickly just grab something from the konbini Get something delivered or go out for like either a quick meal Like you have these restaurants where you can just eat something 30 minutes and leave Like ramen or like a rice bowl or something and then maybe on the weekends have like a more like longer, more enjoyable meal but um, maybe like people who are married with kids tend to cook more this is the image I have, not 100% sure but from what I've seen it's mostly like on the go, get it delivered, konbini, things like that and uh, that's kind of the attitude that I have been <laughs> adopting recently which is not good, I want to get back to cooking much healthier, much cheaper hmm. where do I have a beer? Um, anywhere anywhere is fine if you go to like one of those fancy like beer restaurants like Belgian beer thing, it's gonna be super expensive so if you, if you want like a high quality beer you have to go to like the more expensive things but if you go to like kind of like a dirty izakaya in Shinjuku it'll be super cheap, the beer will be gross but it kind of depends what kind of vibe and what kind of beer you want you can get beer anywhere i don't have any specific recommendations unfortunately i do enjoy a beer but i'm not that picky and uh, sometimes some, just a beer from the konbini and enjoy it at home or in a park is just as enjoyable are you in a relationship thank you for the content and congrats on two years thank you am i in a relationship well i did say that i was ready to talk about just about anything but for that side of my life i like to keep it a little more private until I break up and <laughs> I want to spill all my feelings online about being sad <laughs> I'm kind of stuck between wanting to keep some things to myself and then ending up sharing more too much on the internet um, but I can say that I have recovered from last year's disastrous relationship and that I have been on multiple dates since then and that I'm in a good place right now that's all I'm going to say for now for now who knows afterwards
but thank you so much for your question am i content with my life i am feeling happy and positive and i look forward to the future i am very aware of what i'm missing in my life and i'm doing my best to get those things that i am missing but for the most part i am i'm in a good place do you think it's hard to make friends outside of the superficial level the kind of friends you trust and talk deeply about life slash anything with yes but i think that may be a me problem i'm very paranoid and socially anxious and i keep thinking that people don't actually like me are pretending to like me are using me you know that kind of silly brain thing so it is personally difficult for me to make good relationships and good friendships and things like that now in japan people are quite shy and quite private with their emotions so it does make it twice as hard because I'm very private and they're very private. I feel like it takes time for everyone to open up. So yes, it has been difficult uh, to create <laughs> non-superficial friendships. What do you think people worry about in their lives compared to what seem to be in other countries? Like Japan overall isn't worried about homelessness or politics, for example, but what do they worry about? Oof, I should make a video, <laughs> ask a Japanese person because I personally don't know what japanese people are worried about i think they're worried about keeping their job and having enough money and what kind of food they're gonna eat next but otherwise i'm sorry as a non-japanese person i i don't really know maybe i'll try and ask around and find out how do you deal with loneliness and keeping a good mental health oh my god i don't know but what i can say is that when you have the wrong people in your life everything will feel wrong you will just feel like you're not functioning and you will feel dragged down and drained and contaminated by negativity so maybe for now my answer will be have the right kind of people in your life mm. how do you deal with loneliness on the other hand well first of all be okay with being by yourself i know it's easier said than done have a good hobby that will keep you busy and then there are very nice people online like social media even reddit though be careful on reddit because they're all kinds of people I mean, actually there are all kinds of people online but if you have a hobby go find a platform online with people who share the same hobby something like that like my main instagram i mainly follow people who do art illustration and sometimes i've been able to be in contact with those people and it feels really good to have something in common to talk about do you feel at home like japan is where you're supposed to be at this time yes 100 percent already mentioned that one that when i went back to belgium it it didn't feel like home anymore not that much just my family there that i really miss but right now japan is where i want to be and where i'm probably going to be if all goes well for the foreseeable future are there gyms easily accessible it seems japan isn't very fit fitness focused in terms of the gym i know they have nature trails and a lot of wa walking um good question there are many many gyms especially in tokyo like so many like big name gyms and you see advertising for gyms everywhere uh, like chocozap for example is one of the cheapest ones uh anytime fitness like 24 uh, hour gyms um there are, there's a lot there's definitely a lot there's definitely a push for people to be less sedentary here to like after work go move their body and sweat it out um yes of course there there nature trails and i definitely see a lot of older people going on hikes and stuff i feel like i feel like japanese people do move their bodies quite a lot i know there's like the image of like work taking like consuming every hour of of the day but yeah i feel like i feel like uh, health is very important here and uh becoming more and more important with so many gyms being around but then again i'm not japanese so this is just what i've been noticing and my opinion so have you found it easy and safe to travel and explore prefectures within japan in terms of safety i do feel pretty safe here i mean it's like any country there are some places you should avoid but um especially for a big city like tokyo i do feel quite safe alone walking home sometimes late at night um especially compared to brussels where it would be absolutely crazy to walk home at night but here it's it's pretty much okay i've barely done any solo traveling since i've moved here unfortunately i mean it's it, i'm not a tourist anymore it's the daily grind now for me but when i was traveling alone when i was younger and new to solo traveling as a woman 
yeah, Japan felt really unbelievably safe. Then again, don't take that for granted. It's like any other country, you, you have to take care of yourself. Don't, don't do anything stupid. That's all I would say. What do you think you'll be doing in two more years? Someone else asked me that. Where do you see yourself in two years from now? So two questions into one. I think I'll still be in Japan in the next two years. That's, I don't see myself moving back to Belgium and I don't see myself moving to any other country in the near future. I'm just hoping that if I'm able to stay in Japan because it's always up to the visa in the end, I am in my own place. I have a much better job, more like healthy for myself and better paid. And I hope that I'm able to reconnect with the artsy side of me, the part that I have been pushing down and not being able to prioritize lately. That is what I hope. In terms of my personal life, well, I, I, I do hope to uh, settle down and get married, start a family, all that stuff, all that. <laughs> Why is it so embarrassing to say? It's such a normal thing, but I'm, like, I'm so weird sometimes. Like, I want to get married. It feels weird, but it's normal. It's, it's not a bad thing to want that. Ugh, I don't know what's wrong with my brain sometimes. But yes, that, that is something that I, I would love to be able to do if that's in the cards for me. Settle down, have some kids. <laughs> things like that. I did see a question about YouTube. Let me find it. Actually, that's, just, that's the last question. Do you see yourself continuing YouTube? And if so, do you find it hard to balance with life in Japan? So those, I will kind of bunch them all together. Thank you for your questions, you guys. Very pleased to hear you all chiming down in the comments. If you have any more questions, just type them out. Yes, I do want to continue YouTube. Actually, I would love to do YouTube even more. Like there are so many things that I want to show you guys and so many things I want to talk about and so many also like totally non-Japan related stuff that I want like some small projects that I want to film or try to film like update my editing skills, update my updating my, my filming skills there's so much I want to do on YouTube and same with the art thing so as I mentioned I'm not giving up on like the whole creative side hustle like potentially one day becoming my main hustle I really want that to happen, but as part of like this, the, that question about YouTube, it is so hard to balance right now. It is, it's doing my head in. It's like I'm, I'm spread so thin, so, so thin, you guys. I feel like I'm giving 30% there and 30% there and 10 and then 5 and nothing is being, like I'm not giving my, my full attention to this one thing and it's, it's, it's annoying. Because everything deserves like more of me, like art deserves more of my attention and YouTube deserves more of my attention but I feel like I'm just like running around and not doing things the way I want them to be done so it's really tough, it's really really tough but Japan makes it worth it, like I really like it here I like what I'm starting to build for myself. I am so optimistic about the future, I'm so optimistic and looking forward to it but a lot of times I wake up and I'm still tired from the day before and sometimes I wake up after a week's work and my room is filthy AF like you see those anime with like the trash has been piling up and books and I just have to spend the entire day like cleaning up and you know it's things like that like how do people adult? how do people have enough time with 24 hours in the day? how do they have enough energy? am I missing a manual to function? like you know that kind of thing um, why do people seem to be able to handle all these side hustles and tasks and I'm just like letting all the balls drop <laughs> type of thing but I love it here. I got like a few messages on Instagram, like a few DMs, like you seem so much happier lately and thank you for noticing. I do. I do feel happier. I, I can't explain it. Oh god, I've had to change the battery so many times so far and I feel like this one is about to give out again and I think, I, I think I'm gonna have to stop here. My voice is dead <laughs> and I've said so much and also like I barely spoken about anything at the same time so i'm gonna go review this footage and hopefully it makes sense hopefully it was an enjoyable video if you have any other questions just write them down i'll be happy to read them um, any ideas how to like <laughs> manage like productivity and schedules that would be cool too because i i don't know i don't know what i'm doing but um mm. 
it feels good. I feel like I've, I've got a handle on, on things and that I'm moving forward, even if it's like one millimeter at the time. Keep moving that arrow. Think about where you want to go and just move it a little bit every single day and I'm sure we'll get there somehow. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced of it. I feel good. I feel good. Anyway, <laughs> enough for now. Thank you everyone for still being there after so long. Like some of you have been watching and commenting or first time commenters but long time watchers. Thank you so much for all being there. Thank you to Patreons. Thank you for, for, for everyone on every single different platform that I'm on. Thank you to all of you and uh, to the next year here in Japan because I'm all set for another year at least. So looking forward to it and hopefully I can bring you some new content somehow, sometime, soon. Thank you. Oh, are you all? Big kisses. Double kisses time.